Hello and welcome back. Today we are going to be answering a very simple question, and that is, is ballistics gel accurate? Like most questions in this world, this has a very simple black and white answer. And that very simple answer is no, it is not accurate. Well, I suppose that's not necessarily 100% true. I mean, it gives useful information and that can be applied to real world applications. Some people would call that accurate. And well, for most tests, it's kind of inaccurate. There are certain ways you can use it that are definitely very accurate. I guess maybe this question isn't that simple. But anyway, let's get into what ballistics gel is and is not good for. Ballistics gel really is just normal gelatin. They just have a higher quality control so that it's more consistent. This block I have here is just normal gelatin. It's not actual ballistics gel. That means that for scientific tests, it's not as accurate as it needs to be. But for my purposes, I'm not doing actual experiments with this. This is just um, sort of a placeholder, something I can hold in this video or something that I can stab with a spear. So for my purposes, this normal gelatin ballistics gel is more than close enough to the real thing. Now often people like to think that this is designed to represent the human body. If I hit this, it's like hitting my arm or my chest or something like that. It's, it's a stand-in for a person. Now in some ways, that is what it was designed to do. However, there are limitations. Ballistic gel was developed based off of pig muscle. So right off the bat, that sort of indicates that it's not really the same thing as a human muscle. But pig muscle is believed to be very similar to ours, so it is sort of an accurate representation of our body. One important note to make here is that that is pig muscle, not pig skin or human skin. This is just the muscle. Skin is much more resilient than muscle, really, and that's why it's on the outside of your body, to protect your muscle. But there's another important thing to mention here, which is this is ballistic gel. Ballistic meaning a projectile. In this case, we're talking about bullets, which are a supersonic projectile. They are moving very fast when they're hitting this stuff. So even though in theory this should be similar to human muscle, that is only for supersonic projectiles. That's all it's calibrated for. They didn't test to make sure that it cut like human muscle, or that an arrow would hit it like human muscle. It was just for bullets. So right off the bat, a lot of tests we see with ballistics gel, including my own with the spear, are sort of inaccurate because ballistic gel really is not designed for those tests. This becomes really apparent when you handle the stuff because it actually tears pretty easily. I don't exactly spend a lot of time handling raw human meat, but this just seems a little bit too flimsy to really represent what human muscle can do. Just think about the fact that I can tear big chunks of this with just my muscles, even though those chunks are bigger than the muscles I'm using to tear it. So obviously this doesn't accurately represent muscle in every scenario. Obviously the best thing to use it for is ballistics. That's what the FBI uses it for. That's what most governments use it for and scientists use it for. But even in ballistics tests, it's important to realize that it still has its limitations. There's this idea that if I shoot a bullet, and let's say it goes six inches all the way through this block, that means it will go six inches through me. That isn't necessarily true, because this isn't designed to be a one-to-one -one representation of the human body. If you don't believe this, simply look at the way that standards change. Initially, the standard was 20% gelatin by mass. Now it's been reduced to 10% to save money. This block here is about 12%, so somewhere in the middle leaning on the modern standard side. So obviously changing the amount of gelatin will change the consistency of the gel. So the fact that they were willing to change it to save money really indicates that it's not designed to be a one-to-one -one comparison with the human body. It's supposed to be a cheap and effective test medium for ballistics. So instead of looking at it like six inches into this block as six inches into me, a better way to look at it is bullet A goes this deep, bullet B goes twice as deep. Now the actual depth they go in isn't as important as the ratio between the different depths. Bullet A goes half as far into the block, that means bullet A goes half as far into me. Now I don't know if there's an equation you have to put it in first, but in general, if it goes deeper in ballistics gel, it goes deeper in you. And like I said earlier, that only goes for bullets, because that's all this is calibrated for. It's not calibrated for knives, it's not calibrated for arrows. 
It might be somewhat accurate for those, but you can't know 100%. So now you might be wondering why we even have ballistics gel at all. I mean, if all we want is a consistent block of material to shoot into, why not use rubber, foam, or wood? Now it's more apparent why we wouldn't use wood, because it has grain structure and varying hardnesses, so it, it's not as consistent as something that's synthetic. But that still leaves the question of why we don't use a rubber or a foam instead. I've just done some simple research, so what I say from here on is going to be more speculation on my part. So I think that changing a bullet changes the impact on the gel, and that that is an accurate representation of how that change will affect a human. Other materials like rubber might not react the same way as muscle to changes in the bullet. Notice everything here is about change in the bullet, not just the bullet itself. Ballistics gel is only useful for measuring differences. You need something to compare to if you want to use it. Now to explain how materials act a little differently than muscle to bullets, let's look at a 9mm. It's a handgun round. I'll put a picture up in the corner. Now let's compare that bullet to a 50 caliber sniper rifle. I'm going to put the cartridge up in the corner at the same scale as a 9mm. You can see how much bigger the 50 cal is. Which one do you think is going to penetrate deeper in a person? The obvious answer is that that 50 caliber round is going to go through a lot more flesh than any 9mm round can. This just makes sense, and we have anecdotal evidence from battle to back it up. So if you want to have an accurate test medium for bullets, obviously 9mm should not penetrate as far as a 50 caliber. So that should be true for ballistics gel. A 50 caliber will penetrate deeper than a 9mm. However, for other materials, it isn't necessarily true. Think about just water. Despite what Hollywood shows, water is really good at stopping fast bullets. This is because it has surface tension. So when a fast bullet comes in and hits it, it smushes it and stops it in its tracks. Whereas a slower bullet will actually penetrate deeper into water. 12 gauge, one ounce slug, all that power out of a 20 inch barrel. Didn't really go very far. 5.56, five, full metal jacket, all that speed out of a 16 inch barrel. Nothing different. 380 ACP, probably one of the weakest rounds, most ridiculed rounds ever because it's so weak and tiny and it was a hollow point and we shot it out of a three inch barrel and it went the furthest. So obviously we shouldn't just use water as a test medium because it doesn't accurately represent our bodies. You might think that it'd be a good representation because we're mostly water, but that water is mixed in with a lot of solid fibers and that sort of breaks up the surface tension a little bit, a lot like how having gelatin in this ballistics gel changes the way the water reacts. Now water isn't exactly a fair example because it is a terrible test medium for bullets. So maybe rubber is a little bit better than water, but maybe it goes too far the other way. Maybe it doesn't have enough surface tension, meaning that if you hit it really fast, it doesn't hit back hard enough. So maybe ballistics gel is just that happy medium where it hits back just hard enough, but not enough to stop fast bullets right in their tracks. So that last part was mostly speculation, like I said, but I think it gives a good explanation to why we might use something like ballistics gel over other materials. So to sum up what I've said today, only use ballistics gel for a bullet test because that's really what it's calibrated for. Also remember that it's a representation of muscle, not skin or bone, just the muscle. But anyway, that's going to wrap up the video for today. So I'll put out a video soon of me using the ballistics gel properly, not stabbing it with a spear like in my last video. I'll take it out and shoot it with a few different guns and see how it reacts to the different bullets. But anyway, that's all for now. I'm Con Hathi. Bye.